none of us really knew what it was and what it was capable of. Um, we just heard, you know, things on the news. It was a shock. It was a shock to everybody. I mean, we didn't know what to expect. It was like, it was just so. I don't know. Like, there were not everybody were in shock. Nobody. We didn't have to. We didn't know what to do with ourselves, did we? We were really, really like, blooming, you know, you, you did, you've got flat going out of house. You know, you, you couldn't do this, you couldn't do that. You were, you were restricted, weren't you? What you could do, you know, what you could do. Uh, well, lockdown. And we, let's say it would have shocked the system. Well, my wife was pretty healthy. She was a big walker before Christmas. Um, fine. But then after Christmas, uh, in uh, 2020, she became unwell, and because of the, of the virus, it, we were discouraged from face-to-face um, -face, um, diagnosis, basically. In lockdown, I only got to see my main best friend once, and it was quite hard not to be able to see them. Like. Later on, we, we started doing Zoom calls in the morning so we could see each other for a bit more like mental health. Um, and that, that helped a lot because not being able to see your friends for ages was just quite hard for me and the rest of my family, to be honest. I'm surprised at how quickly people got together to help each other. You know, it, 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 I thought it, 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 it was uplifting at times to think that the people were doing something for somebody else for a change. It's pretty much, especially doing the job that I do, it's pretty much all I could think about 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, you have the worry of taking it home to your children and you've also got the worry of bringing it into work because you're looking after vulnerable people. Um, so yeah, it's changed, I think it's changed everybody's lives. No, I'm not saying that that delaying diagnosis would have made any difference, but it it certainly didn't help. Um, and the other thing is, you, you couldn't talk to the consultants face to face. They were so busy. Um, you talk on the phone, but you, you, you couldn't really get close to the, the sort of treatment she was having. I went into hospital and I didn't know they were going to come out in a book box. <laughs> I honestly didn't, and it was a frightening experience. I feel very lucky. To, to still be alive, actually, and, you know, not take things for granted. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I could have not been here quite easily. Could have been in the box now. You know, as simple as that. So I, I don't take things for granted as much, and I appreciate things as you know more. I've definitely learnt to um, learn about my family a lot more, and that has also helped me. I don't know, kind of like just develop in a better way, and. I've just become a lot more happier being able to sit down and have a chat rather than because my dad used to get from home really late and then we wouldn't really get to spend any time with him so in lockdown every meal we'd all be sat together and it'd be, it, it was just really nice to be able to have that again. Before the pandemic I was a volunteer on the intensive care units at Huddersfield and Calderdale with my dog Tilly and then of course the Covid outbreak happened and we couldn't go in but they were desperate for just little bits to help them through the shifts. So drinks, um, toiletries, uh, little snacks, anything like that. So I contacted um, some companies within Kirklees and then other people got involved as well and the community just pulled together. Well, the, uh, the diagnosis began in January. Um, I suppose with the doctor it would have been in February. Um, through March and she, she died on the 2nd of April. None of us really knew what it was and what it was capable of. Um, we just heard you know, things on the news, the guidance that we got through from the government um, and it was like walking into something blind. Just the whole of Kirklees came together, north and south, it was amazing. Just that morning, it was quiet and she'd gone. Yes, unpleasant. Staff were worried, you know, although that being said, you know, they were here every day. 
didn't know what they were dealing with, but they still came to work. It's really changed for me a lot. One, because I've been uh, very bad with COVID. Yes, I've been very poorly and my dad is more worse than me. He paralyzed uh, after COVID for the right side and uh, he's got dementia as well. But thanks for God, now he's good. Is everything come to normal? I knew what the staff at the hospital did because I went on there with Tilly. But now I appreciate far more what the emotional implications have been. I appreciate life is so precious and, you know, we need to be careful to make sure that we are protected. I think leading staff through it, you know, it was really difficult um, because usually I'm the one that has the answers. So, you know, usually if there's a situation, any situation that arises, I can deal with and I've got an answer for and I can guide the staff through it. You know, so to try and guide staff through something that I didn't know and I didn't have the answers for was really difficult. I've learnt that I, I enjoy helping people. I enjoy making a difference to people's lives in whatever level or way that it is. And the value of life, more than anything, the value of life. I've grown up a lot more and more responsible and I take care of my family a lot more than I did because I just rely on my parents to do everything for me. And during lockdown, I've realised that I've seen my parents do work and I've seen them clean the house and everything. And it made me realise that I need to help them out and not just let them do it all on their own because it's very hard. So I tried to brush it off, but uh, gradually come to terms with it. Um, worried about me being lonely. Um, but luckily I have a family, or Carol's family, quite close. You know, we, we, we do this job for a living and we're used to death. It's, it's part of what we do, but not to the extent that we had at the beginning of last year. Um, and I know that had a massive impact on some of the staff and, you know, speaking to them how upset they were and, you know, guilt. Some of them felt guilty. It were, it were awful. I think this whole pandemic has really made us think twice about what we were doing before. Um, so hopefully there will be a lot of change in regards to in, in regards to everything really, in regards to societal issues and climate change and the way that we acted just in general. My mum had been diagnosed with cancer before the pandemic, so I've been busy looking after her and helping with her and then my father ended up having to go in hospital um, with dehydration and then whilst I was in hospital he caught Covid and he died. My mum died in the, in the second lockdown. Before I got poly I'm thinking um, it's not 100% believe it is Covid. I think this has happened for everybody till have one case in the family or people who knows. Um, but when it's come to me, then I straight away say to my family to stay away from me. And he don't want to stay away. He catch COVID obviously. Then after that is very bad time. <laughs> and we thinking maybe we lost dad, but God is the one. God have another plan with him. I've definitely learned that I'm a lot more resilient than I thought I was going through certain things during lockdown. I think the future now, um, you know, the way we're looking at it now to where we were looking at it eight months ago is very different, you know. It's, it's gone back to now being a safe place and we feel safe with everything that we do and, you know, the vaccines and things like that. We, we feel a lot safer than we did. Um, so I think the outlook is, is bright for care homes. I've got two daughters and one son. Is my son is come home, start work in the home, he work in the sky, and my second daughter, she work in the British gas. She come home, but it's my big daughter is function. She go in the work. <laughs> I'm so scared.
I don't know what she could have been. I think if you were alone, you became even more alone. You really were isolated. But I think if you had family with you, it gave you the opportunity, particularly I would say those that have uh, parents at work, I think it gave them a fantastic opportunity to be with their children. Um, and and I, one of the things I've noticed, and it's lovely to see families going out cycling together or walking together, and the most brilliant part of it is it's carried on. I think that's the worst thing about the whole pandemic. So many people, you know, so many families, the loved ones have died on their own, by themselves. Not just in hospitals, but in care homes and, and, and everything. Nobody was allowed in, they had to die alone. And I don't think there can be anything worse than that. I think it's the most tragic thing about this whole pandemic. I need to cut myself a bit of slack. I put a lot of pressure on myself with like schoolwork and um, just, just in general, I'm quite a perfectionist in that um, sense. So to not put as much pressure on myself and to accept when people actually want to help. I sort of always want to be the one that's helping people, but sometimes I need to step back and be like, okay, and maybe, I was the, maybe I'm the one who needs a bit of help right now, and then I'll be able to help these people. Obviously on that time you realise it is many people who really need help. This is because when it's all good, you never think it is people who really uh, need, need your help. And you really have people for whom you can give your help. I'd been in hospital and had an emergency operation. So that was that was two weeks before the lockdown. And then obviously the lockdown came and hit us all. Uh, me personally was then, I needed the support from my family and that. And obviously with lockdown, I couldn't have it. So I had to stay in on my own. And also because I'm disabled and I've got health problems, I had to stay in 13 week because that's what the government told us. It affected like, young people quite a lot as being able to see friends is like a big part of like growing up and stuff like especially like people just a bit older than me and stuff like in college like weren't able to go out and do stuff they'd normally like do. She's go work, she can't stay at home and I'm so scared. I know. Then I, I start to pray four or five times for my children and my friends and my brothers and sisters and my families. Now, all the time I do like that. But you know, it's everybody saying, it can't go in the garden, can't go everywhere, just took inside. It's, ex it's an experience which is, I guess a lot of people would never thought would have happened and the changes that they had to adapt to to you know to, to survive um, a lot of things has happened we've, we've lost a lot of loved ones and you know that, that's been tough I think I actually got like a lot more independent like I feel like I don't need to rely on people as much like I can do stuff for myself you know and it was like this is just absolutely terrible this it really, I mean, I'm, I'm not a get-me-down person, but it did actually hit me and think, you're, on, you're actually on your own. There's nobody here at all. And that, that was for 13 weeks. It was a bit awkward because, like, you had to, like, wear masks and you had to do, like, the um, one-way system and stuff. So it was a bit, like, awkward. I'm scared. It's not uh, first time. It's not COVID start. I'm very scared, is you know, every time home, no outside, and uh, I went to Pakistan February, and uh, lockdown is you now in March, and I just took uh, Pakistan, and my kids in this country. And uh, he said, Mom, stay Pakistan, stay Pakistan. He's England is very uh, COVID. And say, uh, for five months, he's Pakistan. I'm very, very scared. At home, 
like the learning was kind of hard because there was no teacher to explain it but I got to spend more time with my family. I had to deal with the death of my brother and um, that really affected me because um, my family original from the West Indies and it was just myself and him here after my parents emigrated back. So a lot of it was down to me just to, you know, take care of everything and to make sure that he had a good send off. And, you know, although you had like family and friends around you, in some aspects, you know, when that door is closed and you're by yourself, it, it really hits home you know and all the memories keep flooding back and you know you're hoping things were different so it um it it still sort of you know comes to me now and again and it sort of put me in a in a moment that makes me reflect and wanting to know did i do enough for him i like to stay like outside because when I was inside my house, I felt like I, like I needed to go be like at least in my garden. It was really hard to stay inside. And I think a lot of uh, uh, people, I mean, I'm one of them that's always said, oh, I wish the world would just stop. I feel like I'm on a hamster wheel. And the hamster wheel stopped. You know, when the pandemic came in and the lockdown, despite, and I know a lot of people, I've lost relatives. But the, the bad side of it is that, but the good side of it is the hamster wheel stopped and people got the opportunity to reconnect with each other. So not just worried about me being here on my own, it was the fact then you've got the worry on top about like my daughter with mental health, other people, my friends as well. One of my friends lives on her own like me and she actually hasn't nobody because her family live away. And that was like, all that, you, you know, you're not just thinking about yourself, it's other people. And then that gets you then thinking, oh, you've got other people while well, they're going to cope. And it was just horrendous is the word. But I do his video call and I see my grandchildren. I've got little four years granddaughter. She's so beautiful and she's very good. And I, speak, I cry and he cry. Everybody is crying. Then is my daughter say, mom, why you cry? I say, I miss you. That's why. It's very bad. You know what? I'm taking every day as it comes. Not making any big plans to do anything because no one knows what's around the corner. Some of the last photographs of my mum with, with my children. You know, we've all got his masks on. I don't think I was learning as much when I was at home because I, cause I, cause if I want to play on games and stuff, because I, I know I have an option at home to go and play my games, but at school you don't have that option, so I, I struggled to learn because I know I've got that option to go and play, but I, I know I needed to learn, so I tried my best to learn, but it was a lot more harder because I just got, I kept on getting distracted by things, but like at school it's hot, you don't really get distracted. I, well, I'm one of these people, if, if you've got the rules, you stick by them, especially with this going on, you know, this pandemic going on. I mean, I used to sit here many times and look at news and things like that and think, why aren't you doing as you're told? Because if you did and you followed the rules, we wouldn't be where we are today. If everybody stayed in and did exactly what we were told, I think personally, my opinion is, it wouldn't have spread. You know, I asked my son, Sajid, thank God, is everybody okay? There's no fighting, nothing at all. If Sajid says, mom, you don't know how many people is divorced, how many people is kill each other? You don't know. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't personally think I did too well in lockdown. Things could probably still get worse, so I'm not making any plans right now. I realised I lost people. And when I was in, in a bad way myself, I thought, you know what, life is too short. Just get on with it, just do what you need to do. It's changed the whole world, hasn't it? You know, I think I think people might have got closer. They might value the life a bit more. I think, definitely, value because of all the deaths that's gone on. Homeschooling, it was it was all right, um, but um, it, there wasn't as much help as my parents were busy doing like their work and stuff. And then my mum's best friend Dee 
character is Dee. She uh, came along and uh, she said, uh, I've known your mother since I was five and there's no way I'm sitting here with a bloody mask on. Get him off. So she ripped her mask off and got, you know, it's just little things like that, you know, it's just, got some lovely pictures of them. But, um, yeah, it was, it was a difficult time. Even when I'm speaking to my children and my grandchildren, it's just like, you know, things are going to come to try you. So you always have to try and do the best you can to overcome all the adversity because life isn't easy. The mosque, um, it was closed for a bit, so I did get more time with my family yeah. as, a lot because, and so I helped my mum because what if something like this happens again? So I, I want to spend more time with, like, with my family and stuff. It's, it's changed different people's opinion on life, I think. I think you should just grab everything that you've got now because of the pandemic. It's made you, it's, I think it's made people like that. Instead of saying, oh, I might do it, I might not do it. Going through pandemic, it's like, just do it. Change your life. Don't just sit thinking, I will, I will, I will. Get off the of backside and do it. I'm hoping that the, the having gone through this, uh, the youngsters of today might actually value time and nature and you know, having spent time with your parents when you were younger, maybe they'll do the same when they're older and remember the good times that they spent and do it the same for, the, for their children. Trying to get on with my life. There's a lady in the choir I quite like. Not sure whether she likes me. Um, I'll ask her one day. 